the alternative German battlecruisers have come to Legends and offer a unique playstyle to fans of brawling battleships. They have great secondary sonar and even torpedoes. This leads to the main big question, full secondaries or not? We will answer that question, give you some pointers on the gameplay of these ships because they're not the easiest battleships to play in the game, and at the end I have some information new to me that I think secondary mains would like to know. So why are they difficult to play? Well, the main reason is because you have a limited number of damage control parties, just like the Soviet battleships. You get three. However, unlike the Soviet battleships right now, there's no way to increase this number. Say we have Vladivostok, for instance. We throw Mikhail Kedrov on there, and we can use Volunteer in Skill Slot 3 or Collective Labor to gather more damage control charges. On the German BBs, that's not an option for now. Now, these are in early access, and that is likely to change. We have it on decent authority that this could be quickly buffed. Maybe it will be a new commander. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe it'll be a commander rework, or maybe just even adding more DCs to the ships themselves. They haven't told us that information. What is for sure about these ships, though, is that they are fun and they have the potential to do some pretty wacky things, especially if you're using full secondaries. However, I would say they are not as survivable as the original German BBs. As it turns out, these are battle cruisers, after all. <laughs> uh, say what you will about Bismarck interprets and their massive superstructures that eat damage. The OG German BB line is uh, miles above these battle cruisers in survivability, not only because of the damage cons, but because these battle cruisers have typically lighter armor schemes, and at the higher tiers, they even have lots smaller HP pools. The whole line has overmatchable bows. For instance, Zeton has a 27mm bow, and anything with 406s or above can punch right through if they aim above your icebreaker. Also, none of the battlecruiser line has turtleback armor, so your citadel is going to be more prone to taking large hits. And I just wanted to point that out first and foremost. You have to learn that about these ships before taking them out. They will not survive like the Bayern, Neisenauer, or other German BBs when you get them into dangerous situations. So, let's talk ship setup. Modules. Well, we're talking full secondaries, right? That means secondary module in slot one. You're going to need that 20% range to make this a viable build. Beyond that, I use propulsion in slot two, but I would urge you to consider the damage control module there if you find yourself dying a lot. This is going to reduce your flooding and fire durations by 15%. Slot three, if you have the option on tiers six, seven, and eight, always take the concealment module. It's very important for these battle cruisers. I keep talking about their poor survivability, and stealth is the ultimate buff to health. Man, I should probably patent that or something. But the enemies can't damage what they cannot see, and with these ships, using the concealment module will allow you to get in closer to make use of those awesome secondaries, or to disappear if you need to. Slot 4, available on the Zeton. You could use main battery reload module, but why? It has the fastest stock gun reload for any 406s currently in the game. 22 seconds base, I believe. Yeah, you could buff it down a little bit more, but I would rather use the secondary module in slot 4 and buff the reload a little bit more. Now builds. Let's look at three together. This could go on for a while, but let's just choose three and move on. The free-to-play optimal build, I think, for you would be to use Ciliax and Von Hipper and Kondo as inspirations. The reasons I said above. The ship is very stealthy, base, but you can get it better. Concealment module and Kondo, you can get the Zeton to have around a 12 kilometer concealment and 11.4 kilometer secondaries. I mean, that's pretty saucy. By the time you're spotted, your secondaries are already peppering the enemies. And the stealth, again, will help you stay alive. If you have him build two, consider Henry J. High. This could be the best commander for this whole line. Because he buffs health, he has marksmanship and master mechanic to boot. The perfect commander, but I get it, not everyone has that one, so use the above free-to-play one if you don't. Uh, Zeton, for example, 10,000 less health than the Iowa and the Vladivostok, so this buff to health is going to help quite a bit. And finally, the build that I typically keep on these ships is the Justinian Lions Fire build. 
This is the build I showed several videos back. If you want to understand how it works, you can go check that video out. The link is in the description below. Essentially, when you use a heal, Justinian Lions is going to increase your fire chance to ridiculous levels and everything in the area of your secondary range will be set on fire. Again, <laughs> that's just what I'm using. I'll tell you right now, I die a lot in these ships. Yes, good, good damage numbers. But if I were you, I would look into some hybrid things to increase your survivability. Moving on, why should you run a secondary build on these battle cruisers? For starters, because accuracy building every battleship in the game is stale. This cookie cutter approach to every nation's battleship lines is just kind of boring. Why not have a little bit of variety in the way that we play this game? And these ships would be the ultimate ships to do that because their biggest selling point is they have some of the highest base range for secondaries in the games. For tiers 4, 5, and 6, they do have the highest base secondary range of any battleships. It's 5.5 kilometers on the De Flinger and the Mackensen, and the Prince Heinrich, it's 6 kilometers. So the 4 and the 5, De Flinger, Mackensen, I had my secondary range up to 7.6 kilometers. We haven't been able to get anything like that in low tier battleships yet, so test it out. Prince Heinrich, I had the range up to about 10 kilometers. Now the Zeton ties with the Bismarck and is a little bit behind the Brandenburg, but still 11.4 kilometer range on my setup. Zeton, worth pointing out, also has quarter pin for the 150 millimeter gun, so they penetrate 38 millimeters of armor. They can dish out quite a bit of punishment. Some might call secondaries useless still. I have been in that camp for a long time, but I have changed my ways. <laughs> it was probably about the time that Brandenburg came out that I'm like, well, hey, there's, there's really something to this. If you use them correctly, they can be highly effective. Take destroyers, for example. So the tiers five, six, and seven all have fantastic hydroacoustic search. Lots of destroyers aren't going to expect this and you can very easily wipe them off the face of the map early on. The sonar combination with secondary targeting consumable can make quick work of most any destroyer. And this leads into one of my first tips for playing these ships. While you do have to be careful around caps and survivability and all, often a decisive play like this at the beginning of a match can win your team the battle. In order for this to work though, you must always have an escape plan with these battle cruisers. And that's why you see me backing into some of these situations or sitting bow out especially in zeton where most of the firepower is on the stern anyways these ships seem to excel when they are defending or kiting away while keeping the secondary guns within range of the enemies but again being ready to accelerate away at a moment's notice enemies pushing you they're also going to have to remember that you have torpedoes at tier six and seven and they're actually decent range 7.5 kilometers they are pretty slow, but again, if an enemy's pushing into you, they have that much less time to react. Now, the last piece of information I wanted to cram into this video was this. Prepare yourself for low XP numbers with these builds. I probably played, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 battles on the Zeton and consistently noticed low XP numbers. Even when absolutely smoking full health DDs, having good games, decent damage, and so on. So I was told that secondary damage and secondary hits are worth less XP than main battery damage. It's apparently been this way on PC forever and is this way in our game as well. The reasoning behind it is this, and I quote, The player is not actively involved in damage dealt. Now, personally, I could not disagree more. For starters, the use of secondary targeting consumables as well as priority secondary targeting are both aspects under the player's direct control. Arguably, they take just as much skill or wherewithal as clicking left trigger and firing at a ship using the auto-aim feature in this game. Furthermore, correctly getting a battleship within secondary range of a DD, spotting them with sonar or whatever and getting them targeted takes active engagement from the player to achieve. It seems like punishment for a secondary aggressive playstyle, while we also gripe and complain about 80% of the lobby just using full accuracy builds and fighting from the back of the map. I think it's a reduction in the incentive of playing ships a certain way. 
and it doesn't really help diversify our battleship play, which, in my opinion, this game needs. Anyways, there is likely no plans of changing this, so I just wanted to rant. <laughs> but you have been warned, you will likely see low ship XP numbers with these ships in their full secondary configurations. Do me a solid and hit the thumbs up button, I would greatly appreciate it also. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. What do you guys think of this line of ships so far? Are you liking them better than the original line? I do look forward to hearing from you, and with that, I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.